welcome to this part part 15 this is a part of a playlist which is dedicated to certified developer associate real certification questions in this part we will look at questions linked with these three topics please remember all questions are still relevant please refer parts 1 to 14 for the latest questions do not forget to hit the subscribe and the like button this motivates me to put more content now let's jump into the questions this question so first let us try to understand the story here so you have various lambda functions and they can call each other and it is handled by an old bespoke code that is prone to failure what means is like if lambda 2 would run after lambda 1 so this piece is handled by the old bespoke code here and sometimes it fails so we want to give a aws service which can be used for this purpose okay, if i see these options only one service fits that is step functions remaining three are not even relevant so i'll tell you why so what is required is like if you are trying to say that okay function three runs after function two so it is kind of an orchestration you are setting a workflow it's a visual workflow and step function is born to do that so the beauty here is and please pay attention the beauty here is it manages failures okay and that is what you have to manage the other thing is it can do retry if there is a failure so it manages it automatically so it's like if it calls lambda 3 after lambda 2 and lambda 3 doesn't kick off it would retry one more time and see or two more times and see if lambda 3 invokes so this is my answer i'll explain why first three are wrong like data pipeline so data pipeline is a web service and you can use to automate the movement and transformation of data it's like your etl extraction transformation and loading so in order to set a workflow you don't need an etl to do that because it is just invoking lambda you are not supposed to you know the question doesn't talk about it does not talk about moving or transforming data now let us look at b it says use sns with sqs so sns if you want to send automated emails sms or push notification to mobile phones then you should use sns in this question do you see any such things where automated emails need to be shared the question clearly says we are having trouble setting up the workflows okay and if i'm using the old method of workflow i get errors give me an aws service to help me with those workflows b is not a workflow solution it is a notification solution so this is wrong and c elastic map reduce i'll tell you up front it's a hadoop based solution so it is used for data processing it's a hadoop based processing service and if you have your know, quantum of data is pretty huge then you should leverage it does the question talk about any data processing does it say that there is a performance issue because of exorbitant data volumes no so this would be an easy one we would strike this out so this would be my final answer so this one the next question is like so we are building an online game using ECS platform okay? and there will be four separate ECS services being used. See the first requirement here is you need unique permissions to various AWS services. That is one. like each service here, each service will need unique permissions. So what is required is from a configuration perspective, the dev team needs to accomplish these criteria in a secure manner so how to go about there are four options 
Now, always remember, like, whenever it comes to granting permissions at ECS level, we we always do it at the task level. This one. If I see all other options, I do not see the word task mentioned. So the role assignment has to happen at the task definition level. So the first one is wrong because it is just talking about creating instance profile. And now B, C, and D are talking about four distinct IAM roles, but uh, they are not linking it to the task. So this is the final answer. Now, if I see this question, so the ask is that they want to search the logs to understand what is going on. And here, uh, the filter is being set, a new metric filter has been created after the logs have been generated. Okay, So that is a bad thing. Like you first set up, set a new metrics and then you start capturing the logs. So what it is saying is, when they try to check the logs, they do not see the results, obviously, because you are setting the metric afterwards. And so the logs will not have it. Okay. So the answer out of these four options would be this one. Because the CloudWatch log only publishes metric data for events that happen after the filter is created. Like I told you, the first step is filter creation. You define which metric you want to track. For example, CPU utilization. Once you define that and you have a filter around it, then the logs will start capturing it. So D is talking about like filtering to S3 bucket. You do not require to export to S3 bucket. CloudWatch itself stores the logs. So this is wrong. Now C is talking about getting these to Elasticsearch. See, you're adding additional costs and for no reasons. That is not, see, as a doctor, you come to know if you, somebody's stomach is not good, they're having a stomach ache, what can be the problems? They will not give you a medicine to fix your feet, to fix your head. They will give you a medicine to fix your stomach. Okay, and A talks about, you know, setting up an interface VPC endpoint. So this, this problem is not with anything to do with VPCs. It's all that, the timing issue. If, there are certain things you have to do first, which you have not done it. Okay, so this is my final answer, answer B. So please hit the subscribe and the like button. It keeps me motivated to put more contents around this. Please do not forget to refer parts 1 to 14 of this playlist. All questions are still relevant. And all questions, you should focus on the concepts. In this part, we looked at questions linked with these topics. This brings us to the end of this part. See you in the next part.